Hi everybody, it's Ingrid from Twinkle and today we're talking about checklists, how they help people learn and how to use them in the classroom. Checklists list the steps and features that students need to include in order to successfully complete a task. This is useful for a number of reasons. They set students up for success by reminding them of exactly what they need to do. They make the expectations of a task accessible and easy to follow. They help students develop positive writing habits and make it easier for teachers and students to see which areas need a bit more improvement as these are the parts that would be left off the checklist. Teachers can also use them when assessing students' work as this is a really quick and easy way to let students know which steps they might have missed or which areas they need to work on. Now let's look at some ways that you can use checklists in the classroom. Of course there are so many but just to get us started I'm going to share three different activities that you can try. First of all you can use them as part of a peer marking activity. Students can have the checklist beside them as they're completing a writing task and then once they're done they can swap their work with a partner. Now they can have a go at peer marking each other's work. There are a couple of ways to make this a bit more interesting. For example, whenever a student sees something on the checklist that the student has very clearly demonstrated in their work, they can tick the box and then colour in an example of when they've done this correctly. This is nice because it highlights for the writer where exactly they've done things right. Wherever possible, avoid leaving peer checking activities like this for the end of a lesson or a plenary. Students will get a lot more out of an activity like this if they have a bit of time to reflect on their feedback and then revise their work afterwards. Activity number two is analysing in teams. For this exercise, it may be best to use some anonymous examples of work from outside of the class. Students can work together in small groups to make a list of the things that they think the text has done right and things that they can do better, and they can use the checklists as a guide. Then they can put the text in order depending on how successful they were, and maybe even write a little bit of feedback on each one. Activities like this are good because they encourage students to cooperate, work as a team, and also develop their communication skills. And our final suggestion is you could play the expert game. In this game, students will become experts on one or two items from the checklist. You can cut up all of the items on the checklist put all of them into a hat and then ask students to draw out a couple of slips of paper. Then students can sit in a circle and pass around the examples of text. You can have a selection of these like in the previous activity. As they receive the text, students will identify whether or not each text has fulfilled the criteria that they've become an expert in. Once they've done this, they may make some notes, pass it on and receive a new one. So for example, say I was in charge of diagrams and a list of equipment or ingredients and we were looking at recipes. I would look at this recipe here and I could say, yes, they have included ingredients. So I'd tick the ingredients and write a comment on them. My next criteria is a diagram, but I can't seem to see one here. So I may make a note down the bottom to say that it's missing a diagram. Once I've made my notes, I pass the recipe on and receive a new text and then repeat the exercise. By becoming an expert in a couple of areas, students will gain confidence and practice in the criteria that they're working on. If you play it again, you can make sure that the students try a new criteria that they didn't work on last time so that they can become confident in this too. Hopefully, once they feel comfortable and confident in what is expected from these features, this will translate well into their writing as well. And those are our three suggestions of ways that you can use checklists in the classroom. We've got tons of different checklists for all kinds of tasks on the Twinkle website, so feel free to take a look around and see what you can find. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day.